Hello and welcome to the Broadcast News Wrap, your shorthand guide to the week's TV news stories featuring some of the TV sector's biggest names. Netflix's Bridgerton has been taking the world by storm these past few weeks with its combination of wit, charm and all the raunchy stuff. And this week, the News Wrap welcomes the show's director, Julianne Robinson, to the podcast. Julianne has the inside goss on working with Shonda Rhimes, moving stateside and Bridgerton's groundbreaking approach to diverse and inclusive casting. Plus, plans for her new Sky Studios backed indie, Longboat Pictures. We've got all of that, plus what Julie's been watching on this week's Broadcast News Wrap. So today I welcome double BAFTA nominated director Julie Ann Robinson to the News Wrap pod. Julie Ann started her career working on UK dramas such as Blackpool, Holby City and Doctors. Uh, and towards the end of the noughties, she landed a gig directing several episodes of Grey's Anatomy. Uh, she struck up a relationship with Shonda Rhimes, the Shonda Rhimes, and has most recently directed two episodes of Rhimes' latest smash hit, Bridgerton, the Netflix period drama that had at last count reached almost 100 million households worldwide. So Julie, you're, you're speaking to us from LA uh, and how are things I over am, there? I think they're pretty much as, the same as they are in the UK um, in terms of the COVID nightmare of it all. Mm. Uh, we we we're, we're the hot spot of the US. Lovely, lovely. Well, that's it. That's always a always a cheery way to start these conversations. Yes. yes. Um, but let's be more cheery. Almost a hundred million mm-hmm. households is um, is quite the achievement from Bridgerton. It's already been renewed for a second series. It's it's looking like um, it could run run and run really. Uh, you directed two of the episodes. Did did you imagine it would have this sort of impact? No, it was. Uh, I, I don't think anybody can imagine this sort of impact to be honest and it's a very strange situation because i live here in in la i live quite far out i'm not an industry person per se i live a bit quite far out and i'm i've been a little bit isolated from all the news i don't tend to read reviews i don't tend to read um all of the press so the main way that i've been hearing about it has been through incoming emails which is really nice people saying oh it's great we're really enjoying it you know i haven't been deluged with the the press of it all that's probably uh probably a a good thing i would imagine Uh, and you sort of don't don't i think so it's a kind of i i've been doing this a long time and i decided yeah i decided about 10 years ago that was it i'm not gonna really subject myself to what everybody else thinks about me (laughs) what i think about me is enough (laughs) amazing amazing i i need to live by that mantra just a little bit more yes (laughs) <laughs> and 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 how did you um you, you you've obviously worked with with Shonda Rhimes a little bit over the past ten years or so, which is amazing, and and we'll come on to that. So is that how you got involved with with Bridgerton, or or is there a bit more of a story behind that? No, I think it's as simple as that. Really, I have a long-standing relationship, and Betsy, who is the land of Shondaland, <clears throat> she's uh, Shonda's producing partner, was just felt strongly that I was the right person for this series. So she called me and I wasn't available. And then she called me again and she said about that series that I called you about, let's, you should really read it. And so I read it. Uh, I was actually shooting a pilot the first time she called. So the second time she called, I read it and I thought, gosh, you know, this is something that I'd love to direct. And Mm. then I was on a plane. (laughs) The next thing I knew. To the UK. What what do you think it is that that people like about it so much? Like clearly, there's just been this really. To to me, it feels like fans of lots of different TV genres, whether that be traditional period drama or or much more modern stuff and and whatnot in between, are, are just kind of all united by it almost. I think the thing is that it's um, it's it's something that that all of Shonda shows have in common, which is people see themselves, and it's also a deliberate casting choices often that people can see themselves in the actors they identify with the actors <clears throat> they identify with the emotional journeys of the actors and um i think it's as simple as that and certainly when i was directing it that was my ambition it was always it was something that i said to netflix right from the beginning was that there's a lot of bells and whistles you know uh with this show um with the production design 
costume design, but everything has got to be in service of the emotions and the people within those contexts and those characters. That was my driving mantra. A friend of mine who's a writer out here always says the art of television is um, running to the spot where lightning has just struck. And I think that that's, that's always true, trying to figure out what made something a success and then trying to replicate it is is definitely it's just part of the process. You mentioned a couple already, but are there other specific uh, elements of working with Shonda Rhimes in particular that that is different to to others in that space? They're incredibly supportive, Shonda Land, I would say, and and again I go back to Betsy Beers, incredibly supportive of the director's vision. Um, <clears throat> they they just get behind the director, they cocoon the director in many ways and uh obviously they work closely with the director and so decisions are all made in consultation it's very very collaborative but uh with key decisions that are quite big in some cases for example using modern music <clears throat> to choreograph all the dances to and they 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 get on board and they support the director. Yeah, and then key personnel choices. For example, I, I got my favorite DP and they were really, they loved uh, that idea working with Jeff Jer. I've worked with him before. Uh, so, so you directed two of the episodes, uh, one and six. Um, I've always wanted to know this. Is it, uh, do, you, do you watch the other episodes and, and really wish that you'd had the opportunity to direct those? And do you think to yourself, oh, God, I would have done that slightly differently or, or whatever. I'm a pilot director, so I've directed 12 pilots here, which always means the first episode of a series. So I'm very used to setting up the look, setting up the tone, and then and then we we and then I kind of leave it behind and hopefully no regrets. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, I think they're all fantastic. All of the directors on the series, fantastic directors. I respect them, respect them all hugely. But something that I've learned is that um, every director comes at material with a slightly different perspective. And it brings me joy to see the shots that 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 they choose. Um, but it I try not to be regretful about things. I try to just emotionally move on, because otherwise you get you could just drive yourself nuts. Much has been made of the um, colorblind casting. Did that feel quite par for the course to you when you were directing uh, or is that quite a big deal? That was something that I thought was <clears throat> essential because this is a Shondaland show and right from the very first meeting, I, I was wanted to talk to them about diversity in casting. It's something that I'm actually supportive of and have, uh, to the best of my ability, tried to implement in my own work over here. Um, so I came in suggesting that the Bridgertons should be diverse. And Shonda had already, by the time I came in, had already been thinking and they, their attitude to it is it's not colorblind casting. <clears throat> it's more specific than that. They were working from the idea that Queen Charlotte um, actually was mixed race. And what would happen if she chose to elevate people in her circle? And so that's it's it's more specific than just colorblind casting, I guess. But it feels so so. Um, again, it goes back to the people being seeing themselves represented on screen, which I think is something that's really important. Mm. That's that's really interesting. So so it was was just the idea that um, the the queen being mixed race would have an impact on on the people around her almost like over a period of time. That's right. So it was it was intentional. It colorblind implies that race isn't considered when casting a series, mm. but this is not that. It was much more intentional than that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you put me right on that because it's almost uh, it gets banded around a lot that that um, that phrase yeah. with a, and, and there's obviously like yes. quite a lot of nuance to it. It feels um, you've obviously yeah. worked uh, quite extensively both where you are now in the US and over here. Um, Bridgerton, mm -hmm. of course, is, is filmed in yeah. the UK, but produced by a US company. Um, 
why, why don't you just quickly delineate to me the differences between working on a big drama in the UK and working on a big drama in the US? I think the main thing, I, a lot of industry professionals now spend half their time in LA and it's much less new. <laughs> but I remember when I first started working in, in LA and people would come out and visit me, they would be amazed at how many um, studios that there are in a really small area. So for example, I my office is on the Universal Backlot. Of course, I haven't been to the office since March, but uh, my office is on the Universal Backlot and it's one, the, my American office. It's a joy to be able to just walk around the Backlot, go and see Jaws happening. Um, but then right next door, you've got Warner Brothers, down the road, you've got CBS, just up the road, you've got ABC, all within 10 minutes of each other. And it's it's an industry town. There's each of the back lots have got, I don't know how many, how many um, stage spaces on them. So it's, it's just a, it's just a much, it's built for scale, really. And there's obviously yeah. the, the, the much discussed showrunner model, which yeah. feels like it's been imported over to the UK and is being adopted more and more. But, but UK drama has traditionally been so authored and tends to be penned mm -hmm. by just one person mm -hmm. throughout a series and, and so on. So, so having had, having had experience, I'd imagine of, of both of those models, is, is there a preference that you have or, or do you see both of their positives? I, I think they're both positive. So with Bridgerton, I work very, very closely with the showrunner who is Chris Van Dusen, who in turn worked very closely with Shonda. And it was, it was incredibly a, a collaborative experience. When I did um, Blackpool back in the day, which, uh, I don't know if you remember, but it was Pete Bowker wrote that fantastic writer, but he basically stayed in his attic or when I directed coming down the mountain written by Mark Haddon, he stayed at home and I would call him and say, Hey, you know, we're at the top of Snowden. This is, this is what's happening. Uh, we were thinking about this line. What do you think about changing it? Or, um, so it's a very much a, much more of a hands-off approach. I don't know what's happening in the UK right now because I haven't actually directed something that has been developed out of the UK for a while. Obviously, Bridgerton was an American model. I try not to be judgmental about it. Um, they're both demanding. Um, I like collaborating with people. I really, it's one of my joys. So I don't find it onerous particularly um the collaborative aspect but mm -hmm. at the same time um you know i the those were the good old days back mm. in the uk well it's interesting because over, over here um P peter bowker is now leading a team of disabled writers um and he's he's acting as a showrunner for a, a drama coming mm -hmm. up on bbc one called um ralph and katie now julie you uh in between in between times you run a production company uh long boat pictures with with mm -hmm. former itv drama commissioner victoria Bay. what's what's happening with long boat at the moment well we've got scripts in development with all the uk broadcasters and they're all different shapes and sizes from half hours to sci-fi thrillers um we're in early stages of developments with a few us projects all of our all of our development is um based out of the uk goes through the UK, but some of them branch over into the US. Um, our slate, one of the reasons why I was very keen to start working with Longboat was to have a very talent driven slate, starting with just brilliant writers that we want to work with. And that's, that's where we are, really, we started up in um, 2019, and very quickly, Sky Studios came on board as an investor. And we just absolutely love working with Sky Studios. Um, the thing that we had, a f we had a few suitors and the thing that made us want to go with Sky Studios <clears throat> was when we heard um, Gary Davey say, we have one rule and that is that there are no rules. And, and so will we be seeing you more in the UK then over, over the coming years? Um, what, what's, what's next for you personally? Well, there's a question. I have four pilot. I've got the US uh, production company as well, and we've got four pilots in contention this year. Usually by this point, we would have heard about pickups. So that is an, that is a COVID 
um, impact on the industry right now. Um, we've got, uh, Victoria and I have got so many exciting things in development. And one of the reasons why I wanted to start the company was uh, obviously when I heard that Victoria was interested in starting the company, that was great. Um, but I was frankly homesick. And now Victoria and I work together very closely. It's really hands across the ocean. We, we talk every day about our slate, about, you know, our uh, development and it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. So I'm hoping to be directing for the company um, in the not too distant future. Look, it sounds it sounds like you've got a lot of exciting things coming up, but I couldn't I couldn't let you go without asking you what you've been watching, which is our, our traditional and favourite segment that we put at the end of, of all of our Gosh. podcasts. I have got a kid that loves Cobra Kai, hmm. so I've been really addicted to Cobra Kai, which actually knocked Bridgerton off the number one spot for a while over here. Luckily, um, Bridgerton reclaimed the number one spot, so. I felt less bad about that, but that's been one thing. Have you seen it? Cobra Kai? No, no. I hear good things all the time. <laughs> it's uh, no, it's, it's great storytelling. What else am I watching? Oh, I'm watching. Um, oh dear. Do you know what? I don't watch that much television. I watch a lot of documentaries. Sometimes it's just easier. I'm watching the aftermath. Have you seen that? Leah Remini. <laughs> No, uh, about Scientology. That's on Netflix. Lupin. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Love that. I mean, my favorite um, thing that I watched, oh, Shit's Creek, of course. Something that I absolutely loved was Paper Chase, Money Heist, mm. which was on, which I thought I'd discovered. I, I actually don't watch enough television because I work in it. It's one of those things where you develop an aversion after a while. Mm. So... Uh, because I spend all day developing it and watching it where I have to for research. So good stuff. Good stuff. I should probably watch more television as well. But Julie, Julie, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. Thanks. Thanks so much for coming on. And I'm sure we will You're speak welcome. again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care. See you. Bye. Good to talk to you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Broadcast News Wrap. I'm senior reporter Max Goldbart, and you've been hearing twice BAFTA-nominated Bridgerton director Julianne Robinson. You can check out past episodes of the podcast on Spotify and iTunes, or on the website via www.broadcastnow.co.uk.